In the 90s, a 34-year-old woman went to the doctor after experiencing a series of headaches. Different tests were performed and soon it became clear she had a tumor in her brain. In order to remove the tumor and save her life, she immediately had to undergo surgery. During the procedure, the doctors were able to completely remove the tumor but noted that some brain tissue of the hypothalamus had to be removed as well. The hypothalamus has a variety of different functions such as controlling food intake or body temperature. After surgery, the woman woke up and everything seemed to be normal, at least until the following night. Although she could fall asleep, she woke up multiple times. On the following day, she fell asleep at seemingly random times and this pattern continued. Her sleep was disrupted, but how did it happen? Let's take some minutes to talk about the science of sleep. We all know how great sleep is and we all know how terrible it is if we don't get enough sleep. A lack of sleep can be caused by many things. Some of us may suffer from insomnia, depression or other disorders. Many external forces can also make us feel exhausted. We might experience work-related stress or have important deadlines making us working long shifts. Whatever the underlying causes may be, sleep deprivation affects many of us. Adult human beings need roughly between 7.5 and 8.5 hours sleep per day. And yet, one third of the US population sleeps less than 7 hours on weekday nights according to recent studies. I also asked you a few days ago how you feel and the majority of you answered that you're tired right now or constantly tired. We live in a society where a lack of sleep is pervasive. And the effects of sleep deprivation can be detrimental. Initially, we might feel fatigue and experience changes in mood. We might also have difficulties to focus and might become forgetful. In the long run, however, insufficient sleep does not only affect our mental state, but can contribute towards obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease and ultimately death. <laughs> but okay, uh, let's take one step back. What actually is the biological basis of becoming tired? If we talk about sleep, we also need to talk about one of the most amazing inventions of nature, biological clocks. Biological clocks are rhythms which take place in cells. We can find biological clocks in bacteria, plants, fungi and animals. The latter of course includes us. In fact, we can find a variety of biological clocks in our cells. The most famous biological clocks are circadian rhythms. As the name suggests, these biological clocks are repeated every 24 hours. In other words, cells in our bodies have processes which are repeated periodically. Within the circadian rhythms, we find the sleep-wake cycle. The sleep-wake cycle is controlled by roughly 20,000 cells in our brain which make up a structure called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. In these cells we find the genes become periodically active and inactive throughout the day. During the day the suprachiasmatic nucleus blocks melatonin which would otherwise make us feel tired. And shortly before we go to sleep in the evening the melatonin is not blocked anymore and we become sleepy. This cycle continues throughout our lives. Besides modulating sleep, the same cells also control our alertness, attention, perception and working memory. There are also other circadian rhythms, but for the rest of the video we will discuss the sleep-wake circadian clock if we talk about circadian rhythms. What I have not told you so far is that biological clocks can be influenced by our surroundings. We call these influences Zeitgeber, which is German and means time givers. One of the most important Zeitgeber is the Sun. The Sun synchronizes our circadian clock each day. We do not only see that in us, but also in plants. Each morning, some plants already position their leaves towards the direction from which the Sun will rise. It's important to adjust our circadian clock as we get different amounts of sunlight throughout the seasons. If the sun did not adjust our sleep-wake cycle, we would either become very sleepy very early in summer or very late in winter. 
But what happens if the circadian clock does not work? Most of us might experience mild forms of sleep deprivation, but some might suffer from extreme forms of circadian ridden sleep disorders. We have seen a very extreme form of circadian ridden sleep disorders in the beginning of the video. The woman who had to undergo surgery to remove a tumor in her brain also lost the neurons which are responsible for her sleep-wake cycle. Her story has kind of a happy ending though, at least to some degree. The doctors told the woman to wake up, eat and go to sleep at very defined times. This more or less restored her sleeping pattern after a while. Besides this story, we know other, more common forms of circadian ridden sleep disorders. In fact, every one of us has experienced what happens if our circadian clock doesn't work anymore. We are all born with a disrupted sleep wake clock, as we have never been exposed to sunlight. In other words, the circadian clock of newborns have yet to be adjusted by the sun. This process takes several months and until that babies sleep at random times which becomes especially exhausting for the parents. Another phenomenon called jet lag is characterized by the inability to sleep when we fly to a destination far away from home. Since the circadian clock is affected by sunlight, we might feel terrible in different time zones and our biological clock only adjusts after a couple of days. People who suffer from specific mental disorders also often have issues in their circadian rhythm. Bipolar disorder patients have prominently been described to show disruptions in their sleeping patterns. There are different reasons why this might be especially observed in people with bipolar disorder. One of which is that patients who suffer from bipolar disorder have certain gene variations which orchestrate the sleep-wake cycle. And these variations might be not as good in controlling sleep. The same patients also often have issues in the levels of their hormones, which might further disturb the sleep-wake cycle. In both cases, the mild form of sleep deprivation from which many of us might suffer and the extreme forms of circadian ridden sleep disorders might cause a chronic lack of sleep. A chronic lack of sleep can make us sick in the long run. This starts with effects which appear when we sleep less than 7 hours a day and they include feeling tired and having troubles focusing. But studies have shown that the activity of brain cells in different parts of the brain can also start to change after a few days. Chronic sleep deprivation also starts to affect the ability of our brain to make new neurons. New neurons are especially made in the hippocampus, the part which helps us to store memories. If we make less neurons, we might have more and more difficulties to remember things. And then chronic sleep deprivation does not only affect our brain but also other parts of our bodies. It is associated with higher risks in getting diabetes or a heart attack which ultimately can lead to death. But how can we fix a society which chronically lacks sleep? There are a few things we could do on an individual or a nationwide level. Each of us could try to sleep more than 7 hours a night. <laughs> this would mean that we have to go to sleep earlier and of course it is possible but often very difficult when we have for example work assignments. If that doesn't work we could at least try to improve our sleep quality. We've already said that light influences the circadian rhythm. What we could do now is that we avoid bright light before we go to sleep. It is especially important to avoid the LED lights of our phones. The blue light which is emitted from our phone is highly effective in suppressing the release of melatonin. In other words, we might have troubles going to sleep when we check our social media before. Finally, we can also help our sleep-wake cycle by simply opening our blinds so that we are exposed to light in the morning. Then we could also start to exercise for 20 to 30 minutes a day or we could try to avoid substances such as caffeine, nicotine or alcohol before we go to sleep. And in most of your cases, light therapy could be used. During light therapy, you sit or work near a device called a light therapy box. 
The box gives off a bright light that mimics the outdoor natural light. And here we come to our sponsor for today's episode. Just joking. But it is true that blue light exposure helps to alleviate a form of depression in countries where there is a lack of sunlight during winter by adjusting the circadian rhythm. Bigger changes could also benefit our societies as a whole. It is estimated that delaying school start to 8.30 am could lead to an economic gain of $83 billion in the US within a decade. This intervention could enhance the academic and professional performance of students and lead to reduced car crashes. Several companies have also observed a higher revenue when they allow their employees to work more flexible hours. It is suggested that workers are more productive when they can decide at which time of the day they should start working. But let's see whether more companies or governments will respond to some of these observations. Since you're still watching this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you're new here. You might also enjoy this video with a similar format where we discuss what life is.